firing managers of Reddit. What was your favorite firing? I fired this girl without the permission of my company once. Essentially I had been told to hold on to a freelancer through the holiday push, utilizing her desire to get a full time role to ask her to sacrifice her own Christmas, to make up for all the extra work of the season, e-commerce. I was informed that we weren't going to offer her a full time job, though, and I knew she had another full time offer with the other company she was freelancing for. She'd been holding out to work at my company and was at risk of losing the other offer while she was waiting to see what my company would do. Of course they hadn't told her they weren't going to hire her, they instead asked me to imply that she would get an offer with a good enough holiday push. They were going to say any amount of work she did wasn't enough to get the offer and let her lose a real offer in the meantime. I essentially pulled her into an office and told her it was in her best interest to accept the other offer and to quit on the spot. I was pulled into a room with the CEO and some others to justify why she'd quit after talking to me, but I just couldn't have it on my conscience. She took the other job and we made it through holiday without her. I managed the team she was freelancing for. So I absorbed most of that extra work, but I'm so glad I chased her away instead of lying to her. I had a repo man working for me who was enormous and had some anger issues he'd stopped making his daily runs and was turning in full strip reports. I called him into my office to discuss the situation with him and it rapidly turned into him yelling at me, including phrases like you're not my dad. Wit. I no point anyway. My boss came in to try to calm him down and told him to go home and then come back the next morning to discuss the situation. As soon as the repo man was gone, I told my boss that I was firing him if he came back. My boss told me that he'd take care of it because thing would get too messy if I did it, which may have been accurate at that time. I was instructed to stay home the next morning so that the boss could talk to the repo guy. I came in at around 10.30 a.m. And there were three cop cars in our parking lot. And as I walked up to the building, our repo man was being dragged out in cuffs and cursed out one of our salespeople who just happened to be walking by point. When I got inside, I found the boss office thoroughly trashed, with chairs and paperwork everywhere. Point I'm sure glad that I wasn't there to make things messy. Point the repo man called another manager who was a friend of mine looking for a job the next week. I got one, let's call him Jeff. Jeff was a faking nutcase. I'm certain he spent the entire ratings on coke and doing shitty karate point I didn't hire Jeff. My boss did. I was his direct manager. Jeff didn't have a house, he lived in an RV which he ended up parking on the property. Cool, whatever. So I start to train Jeff on his daily duty of the shop. This is where living in an RV starts to make some sense. On days it was me, another employee and Jeff. We had a moment to rest as our busy time ended. So I sit at my desk and start doing paperwork. While my great employee and Jeff start to talk point Jeff starts his story along the lines of you ever watch Miami Vice. Other employee J. Yeah I've right, seen it. That was based on me man. I was Miami Vice undercover. I've seen some sheet man Jeff says to him. I glance up from my desk and see him walking over to the mop bucket and picking up the mop. He then starts screeching and doing the worst moves I've ever seen with it. Like some cracked out white ninja that had forgotten anything he'd ever learned about anything. I see Jay trying his hardest not to laugh. I follow sweet and try. I get a grip and ask why aren't you a cop anymore? To which he replied because it was a bunch of politics and I was a loose cannon he says as he put the mop back. I said you don't say. Then listened as he told his story about riding a motorcycle in circa 1980s Miami as he was trying to take down a crime lord. Point my boss did this sort of thing. He'd hire people, anyone really, then give them to me to train and manage them. He had an ability to pick out the most insane people in the state. He lasted two weeks. I came in to watch the previous night's tapes. I had to review them daily in order to ensure no theft had happened. Due to employees stealing a lot. There he was, Jeff and all his vice glory, standing in a hallway in the middle of the night, doing his crack karate with a mop stick. He then went on patrol with it in the parking lot. Some customers complained, and I let him go. My boss hired, I trained, fired the ones that couldn't make the cut. He flipped out like you'd think. 
cops were called and we ended up banning him from the property as he would sneak on every night and sabotage things. That's another story though. In our deli we had a girl named Jess who worked for us for about 8 months before she realized she wasn't going to get the experience pair she tiaz promised her and decided to get another job. But she wanted to stay on board with one foot in the door, just in case what she had didn't pan out so well, so asked to work one day a week. This was fine by us, she was a good worker and we could use the extra help, so she decided to work Sunday evenings. It soon became clear that Jess really wasn't feeling it. Her work ethic dipped, she spent more time on her phone, and she called off. One night she asked to go home early, and when a manager wouldn't let her, because the rest of the staff would suffer for it, she just left anyways. The next week she came back, and we told her she couldn't behave like that, it's unfair to her cowhawkers, but she blew us off, like it was no big deal. The next week she doesn't show up at all. We call her, and she doesn't answer, so we assume she's finally done. I tell management to make moves to terminate her, we usually don't bother with formalities, but I was a bit miffed at how she had so easily disrespected her cowalkers, and tired of her BS, almost two whole months pass without any mention of Jess, when suddenly one day I get a call from the front office. Um, Jess is here asking for an override to clock in. I go up front and yep, there she stands in her uniform, ready to clock in. I burst out laughing and told her she doesn't work here anymore, and to my great shock she's actually pissed off. She says the deal was she would work Sundays. Oh uh, yeah, and you haven't called or shown for the last eight in a row. She tries to call the union, who tells her that more than three no call no shows in a row mean voluntary quit, we were free to terminate her, and she couldn't fight it after the third week. She got so flushed and angry and said that's not fair. I didn't know that. Watching. Her storm off was pretty satisfying. Learning she had her hours cut from her new job and wanted to come back from a cowalker close to her was even better. Folks, moving up is great, but don't burn your bridges. I hired an employee who was close friends with my other employee. They are in their early 20s and have recently graduated college. Employee 1 is super responsible. So responsible in fact that I start letting her watch my home when I'm out of town. Her friend, employee 2, is fiercely intelligent, great with customers, has great sales, while she is at my business, but she calls in at the last minute and awful lot always claiming she has suddenly been stricken ill, and is sheeting herself, vomiting everywhere, so on and so forth. On numerous occasions she would pull this at the last minute resulting in me having to cancel meetings to go work, family obligations, or close my business for that day. The last straw was a during a major shopping holiday. She agrees to work, it's a short shift maybe 4 hours. She starts calling me and texting me at 4am which I don't get because I'm asleep. From 4am to 9.45 I have 15 texts telling me she has been stricken ill and she is sheeting on herself and vomiting everywhere. I call her back, I'm furious because I'm like 99.9% .9 certain she is faking. I fire her and tell her to give the key back to employee hash 1. 30 minutes after I got off the phone with her she started posting FB pictures of her night out drinking downtown. Later, employee 1, who now has a real jobbies and who might consider a friend, tells me that her friend was just hungover that day and didn't want to come it. She said she wasn't even sick point since then, she has called me asking for her job back. We had a starving stifled artist type millennial who worked for us. Typical self-entitled kid who played the race card a lot. Funny thing, he was working security, so it wasn't really a hard or demanding position. We worked nights, but he thought that sleeping during the day was wasteful, so he wouldn't get much sleep at all. So it turned into him sleeping on breaks, sleeping on his lunch, and then falling asleep wherever he could put his head. So I was constantly waking him up when he didn't check back in from breaks or his lunches and finding him out cold where a hard shake was needed to wake him point over time. This got old, then we started to write him up three of those and it was termination time. Except at our level, we couldn't terminate, so it was a suspended pending investigation then ours would call them the next day and make it official. So I had to wake him up three times when he was 45 minutes late getting back from his lunch. 
we get him into the office, and as we are doing the paperwork for his suspension, he falls asleep and falls into me, we are at the corner of my desk with him beside it, I put my hand on his forehead and push him back into his chair, he wakes up, and accuses me of assault, we had a camera slash audio along with two others in the office watching this, he falls asleep two more times, and I push him off of me, and back into his chair each time point, so we get the papers signed, he gets all pussy, and we escort him to the door 5 minutes later we have a guest telling us there is a car horn going off solid in the parking lot, sure enough, he fell asleep at the wheel, so we get him a cab ride home, and that was it point for the record, he had no health issues, he just refused to sleep during day, because cool people never did that. I had to fire someone who I was friends with enough that we had hung out a few times outside of work. It really sucked, and I didn't really want to fire her, but my hands were tied. I won't go into details, but writing her up or giving her a warning were not an option. It makes for a great story though, so I guess I would say it was my favorite point I sat down with her and ours for a private meeting. An hour person always needed to be present for this king of thing, but they basically just sit in on them and witness it. I laid out what was happening, and why, with the evidence I had collected that led up to her termination. She started crying about it, which made the hour person uncomfortable and a bit unsure this was the right move. The hours rep asked the employee to step outside for a minute, so we could discuss it further. The hours rep expresses her concern that this might be too much, and in most cases we need to have documented warnings before firing anyone, and in this case we had not done so. She told me that it was nothing personal against me, but she wanted to talk to my boss about it as well, before she signed off on anything. I said this was not a problem, as he and I had already discussed it at length, to decide if we could afford to let her go with a warning. Neither of us really wanted to lose her, but we ultimately decided termination was the only option point the hours rep brings up my boss while the employee is outside. He answers the phone, but instead of saying hello simply says, she started crying, didn't she? I guess my boss was confident enough in her ability to cry on command that he predicted how the meeting would go. He quickly confirmed that we had discussed it and we had his approval and finished up with the employee point. Since people love a happy ending, I'll also share that the next time I saw that employee she gave me a big hug and told me she was doing well, no hard feelings etc. I told her the story about the phone call to my boss when we asked her to step out and she thought it was hilarious. I'm not a firing manager, but I aided in the firing of one woman. I was working in a restaurant in a small town at the time, so everyone knows each other's business. Or so I'd think. They hire this lady named Jenna, we'll call her. No one knew of her history but me. She and her husband stole hundreds of dollars worth in tools from my dad's auto mechanic shop 5 years back. She also will purposefully trigger her son's autistic attacks in public as a distraction to steal things. Anyway, I was super nervous as I had to train her, and she knew damn well whose daughter I am. She played dumb, and I played dumb back. I decided I'd give her a second chance, maybe she got clean and needed one. I was wrong. Money would fall out of her bra all the time, we were hostesses, so we didn't get direct tips, even after she'd put her wallet away. She also chased a customer down for a smoke, aca pills, and was so loopy she had to get sent home. They were gonna train her to be a manager. Finally, the other managers caught on she was stealing the waitress's tips after busting tables and I came forward. She never realized in her drugged up state they had cameras everywhere and I was able to identify when and where she was stealing. She got fired that night. That's what you get for stealing from my dad. Beach point also she introduced me to a hell's angel leader his wife asked if I would join an MLM with her. I've never noped so quickly in my life. I wasn't a firing manager, but I was told by the manager to let this girl know she didn't need to come back in. I worked at a small family owned restaurant, and it was a Saturday morning slash early afternoon, and I was the only waitress working that shift. I had heard my manager complaining about her the week before, because she wouldn't stay off of her phone long enough to wait on her tables and just wasn't doing a good job in general. The floor manager had taken the girl's shift off of the schedule and failed to tell her. 
so when she walked into work, they told me to tell her to go home. I was a 17 year old kid and this girl was about a year younger than me and knew me before we even worked together. When I told her the news, she goes emotionally crazy. She wants me to tell her exactly why she's being fired, why no one told her until now, and what to do. Holds me up for about 20 minutes, luckily there wasn't any customers that come in yet, until finally I guess the manager sent someone to tell her to quit wasting our time, let me get back to work, and go home. She just looked at them, then back at me and said, well I guess I'll just go to the grocery store down the road. They'll give me a job, because they know I'll be a good worker, turns out, my manager accidentally marked her shift off of the schedule and she really was supposed to work, but that was gonna be her last day, because the owner told my manager to fire her anyway. The grocery store didn't give her the job either. I will put this here, because I was jumping up and down telling my boss to can the guy, but he ended up walking off when we pulled him in to figure out what was going on, hired, a temp and he's training for the back half of the line warehouse and of course, the guy who's already out there, and training him is 100% done with him by the end of day 1. Next day I have to start reminding him, politely of course, to get off his damned phone, and get back to work, and it devolves into him going off on this sanctimonious rant on his philosophies on how we need to be selfish, and how it's up to us to see his worth and how we didn't get anywhere by helping out others, and he proceeds to follow me around, just spewing forth his bullshit rhetoric and I just shut down and let him go. On. Cat is in the tree and the only way he'll come down is on his own point, so I write an email to my boss basically going, warning Will Robinson. Warning. Instead of heeding my advice he decides to send the guy just below him, above me, to investigate and we pull him into a meeting to see what's going on. Well, it turns into him foaming at the mouth accusing me of power tripping, micromanaging, and how he wasn't going to get lectured by some punk kids. He then proceeded to toss his key card at me, called me a racist and said, I was willing to give you guys a golden opportunity, but I don't see no other black people in this joint. And sauntered out point needless to say me, and my supervisor was so stunned we were speechless good riddance. My boss would do the hiring, but I had to do the firing. There were multiple occasions that someone would piss him off, and he would walk up to me and say go fire that fack bag. I would ask why, and he would just say think of something. Normally, I would use the we are cutting back due to a slow season and you are the newest, and, sorry there was one kid that we had a meeting about, and decided to fire him the next day. This kid would come in late, decide when his lunch was, not follow through with paperwork, etc. On the day he was going to get fired, he was late. I had to call him and find out when he was coming in. He said I'll be there in a few, unless you are going to fire me. Ha ha ha. I waited for him to come in, told him he was done and to grab his tools and head out. He called his mom for a ride, since she had a truck. When she showed up, she started cussing us out and flipping chairs and stuff. I told her to leave or I'd call the cops. She sat down on the ground and said that she wouldn't leave until we gave her little booski another chance. Point I said okay, okay, we'll give him another chance, but only if you go outside. She left and he came back in and said that's what I thought. I replied with and now you're fired. Again. And I'm issuing you and your mother a no trespass warning edit, spelling edit. His mom looked and talked like Cartman's mom from South Park. He, too was a chubby little fack who thought the world revolved around him. A few more pounds and things would have started to orbit him. I worked for a security company who most handled industrial properties like factories. And it was dull as hell I will admit. Most nights were just sitting in a shack barely big enough for two people and watching the cameras. The most action we ever got was rarely yelling at crackheads to get foe. It could be easy to fall asleep if you were by yourself, but company policy was sleeping was grounds for immediate termination. One night I called in sick to work. It was lightly snowing and no one would cover for me. Snow is a much bigger deal in the south. Pretty much everything shuts down. I was pregnant and dealing with horrific nausea and I figured the new guy who had actually been there about 5 months could handle one night on his own. I had been working 2 out of 5 days alone every week for a month and it really wasn't a big deal, right? Haha. 
so I get a call around 3am and it's my employee, he's frantic. I'm thinking what the fact could be the problem, this particular property isn't in a well populated area, it isn't operational at this time of year, and we have literally had zero problems there before. He said someone had locked him in the shack. It seemed unlikely that someone was carrying out an elaborate heist on an empty factory that began with locking the security guard in his shack with his phone and radio, so I'm pretty skeptical from the get-go. Now, the door's only locked from the inside, so I knew he couldn't be locked in unless he'd done it himself. He swore that he hadn't locked the door and he still couldn't get out. I told him to turn the lights off so he could see outside and I would come down there and look around and let him out and to call the police if he heard or saw anything outside point I drove down there with my husband, not really knowing what to expect. We circled the place in the car, didn't see anything or even any tracks in the snow. That told me he hadn't patrolled the place at all since he'd been there, which we were supposed to do at least once when we got there and once before the shift was up point sure enough, I go to open the door of the shack and it won't budge. The knobs turns, but the door won't open and then it dawns on me that it's a metal door and it's frozen shut. We had no choice but to pry it open, which faked up the door. When I asked him what he'd been doing on his shift he reluctantly admitted he might have fallen asleep for a few minutes point I was so irritated and still feeling like I was going to vomit everywhere when I told him to go home. It was both satisfying and frustrating because that's the story how I ended up working until 7am in my pajamas in a freezing shack because the door would no longer close all the way. So I used to manage this older lady who always claimed that she had so much experience working for 30 years and generally thought she was basically above the law, despite having worked for our company for less than a year. She worked at home taking sales calls over the phone. She would miss meetings with important info and then turn around complain and beach up a storm about how she was never informed of these things. On several occasions, she would show up to a meeting and them immediately leave and take a sales call. She was horrible to the other sales agents, if someone else would book one of her calls, we did not allow solicitation. Basically if you can book it on the first call, then you don't get them as a client they are free to purchase with whoever gets their next call, if they don't ask for her by name. Also her closing rate was abysmal so it's no wonder others were able to book her callbacks. Overall was just a negative attitude in the workplace. She did not respond to coaching and would constantly cite her year of work experience while also claiming to be unaware that she had to attend meetings on her Outlook calendar and also claimed she didn't understand who to reply to if she was unable to attend a meeting. She would, without fail, every month complain that the goals were unattainable even though most of the employees would meet them. I fired her for some technical sheet with our call compliance requirements with hours behind me. I was so happy to not have to deal with her old grumpy incompetences anymore. The weight had been lifted. <laughs> Owner hired an 18 year old to do security of a lumber yard against my advice. It was not uncommon to find the company car at his friend's house when his shift was ending and mine was starting. I also caught him and his friends operating a giant bobcat used to scoop up logs big enough to crush a man. Owner kept telling me to give him a chance. No big deal, right? One day, night, I come in and he was actually in the office where he was supposed to be with tears in his eyes. He said that he was heading to the warehouse to do a patrol in the company car and an orange sports car made him run off of a super steep railroad crossing and that he had already talked to the owner and written a report. He promptly leaves. I go look at the car. It is beaten all to hell and there's grass and dirt in every crack and crevice of the car. I shake my head, get in what used to be a super sweet ride and go scope out the railroad tracks. Concrete everywhere. No grass. No dirt. So where did he wreck the car? I go about my business and drive to a hidden spot in one of the lumber yards where we would often run off of rough. The hidden spot is a giant mound of dirt in a narrow spot between two warehouses with a chain link fence on the other side. My guess is that he thought he could Dukes of Hazard style jump the chain link fence. But he never made it to the fence as there was a perfect car shaped dent in this giant mound of dirt. He didn't make it up the hill. He made it into the hill point I can't make this up. 
This ex-convict we gave a chance because we needed a piercer on hand during the summer so my boss and I wouldn't have to keep on getting up mid to two to change our gloves and set up for piercing walk-ins. This gift to humanity swore up and down he had professional training and had been a piercer before. He was cocky, arrogant, had a vaguely threatening but joking demeanor, and handled the snake we had in the shop till it decided it didn't like people anymore, though that was satisfying watching him gloat about how much snakes loved him, and not 5 minutes later my boss's snake taking the biggest smelliest wettest snake pup all over him. He finally faked up enough to fire him over piercing this poor girl's septum incorrectly, crooked wrong placement in the cartilage, and the wrong gauge jewelry, and then did it again but slightly higher. Our boss stepped in and did it correctly for him. She wrote the dude a one star review on Google and Yelp with a wall of text. We asked him not to come back point bad things that happened after. Since not many people use a lot of Google reviews still to this day, six months later, it shows up as one of the few reviews people have made about our small shop, and it did put a dent in business for a while, and there's no way we can remove it other than to post he's been fired, doesn't represent our shop values, and hope people scroll down that far. Also a month later his fiance he brought around the shop a lot asked me to drive her to the hospital, because she didn't know anyone else in the area who could give her a ride. Once I asked what was going on she imparted he had beat her to the point of having a miscarriage and he refused to take off work at his new job to drive her, so she was going to walk 9 miles to the nearest hospital, since she couldn't afford an ambulance, and he had the only car. What a faking gift to humanity. Ooh this is so exciting for me. We hired a fellow hiring manager at my company within the last year. Great resume, great attitude, willing to take any project on. Few months goes by and the cracks start to show. We have to explain things to him 5 to 10 times, even when he has written steps to follow. He still misses steps. We catch him in really small really weird lies. He talks constantly about drinking to the point that we begin to believe that he is a functioning alcoholic. He also tells us that this job is a legitimate side gigs so that he can have reportable income to the eyes. He goes on cruises and vacations constantly, so it appears that he is either dealing drugs or doing something else shady we can't really pass this information along to our supervisor until we have a solid case, so we just keep biding our time and taking notes and reporting any major issues. Cut to one day where we are randomly told to roll out sexual harassment training to everyone in management including our team and we are not technically management. He was involved in a meeting about sexual harassment but we weren't, and we are definitely his seniors, so we suspect it was him that had the complaint lodged against him that caused the training to be sent out. A week later three more employees came forward. Since then, five more have come forward. The three employees told us that he took their phone numbers or email addresses from their resumes immediately after interviews and contacted them personally either hitting on them, asking them out, or asking them to be his work wife. Point this is a guy in his mid 40s and these were all women in their low 20s. Extremely creepy. Oh. And he's married to a beautiful woman. I sat in on the termination meeting, and when he tried to argue that it was his say, I got to take a couple digs and tell him that we have so much proof that it's ridiculous he still tried to lie as I was walking him out, and I finally just told him that he was a perpetual victim and a liar, and to get his stuff and get out point I never got to see the light dawn in his eyes that he isn't as convincing a liar as he thinks he is. I don't think he will ever realize how bad of a liar he was good riddance, sack of she. I didn't do the actual firing, but I made it happen point I was in it head at a startup, 250 plus slash dash employees. If my system stopped working, we failed to ship product, bad things happened point I had some old name tags of former employees, many my friends, on my cubicle wall such, that you could only see them from inside my cube. Tall cube point I'm up to my ass in something mission critical at the time, but now long since forgotten when in my cube pops the new VP of ours. She's going around introducing herself. It's all very Silicon Valley cool point, until she turns around to leave my cube point then she sees the name tags. What's this? She asks. I explain. She doesn't like my explanation. It's bad for moral. Take them down. Now, I stand up from my chair 
follow me I said as I walked out of my cube, across the 8 feet to my boss's open door, and stride in. Confused, the VP follows, and goes into the boss's office, Tony, this is, name forgotten, from ours. She has something to discuss with you. Turn on my heel, close the door listen to 30 minute is chewing about taking her mission critical staff off task. Door opens. Ours VP exits never to be seen again. Not just doesn't come near me anymore, no, she's hopefully doing well in her new endeavors elsewhere. I don't fire people, but I report to ours who does that. I work in security point I've been doing this almost 2.5 years, only 4 months of it not as a supervisor. I've had employees asleep on site on and off camera, people on their phones on camera blatantly disregarding duties. People not even sign into the computer until 90 minutes into their shift point employee hash one. After I call him a couple times telling him he's got to do his duties and he's getting a write up, he stops answering or returning calls. At one point, he even leaves a page long rebuttal to his write up point employee hash two. Insulted the cleaning crew as a joke. She swept a broom over the old lady's feet and said this is how you take out the trash. She also tried calling in less than an hour until her shift, need a minimum of 4 hour notice for no penalty, claiming really bad cramps all day. Sorry but if it was really all day, you would have told me sooner. She also tried reporting pretty much everybody at the site for petty sheet, after I told her she would be getting penalized for calling in. Like saying that the receptionist guard is friendly with the client staff. But... She's kinda the first thing people see point employee hash 3, constantly on his phone or switch. I told him that some guys from the client's corporate company saw him on his phone and said security on their phone, we'll secure ha ha ha, and that he can't do that. His response? Well they can blow it out their ass. That's not how it works. Obligatory I didn't do the firing, but worked in it for a bank, and we had to investigate instances where the GL, general ledger, was not balancing point usually it was a program bug somewhere, and you would track it down, fix it. Accounting would make an entry with supporting evidence from us, and life would go on point except for that one time, we couldn't track the bug down and eventually after months we figured out what was happening. A teller at one of the branches would take a fake check from one of her friends and open a new account with it point the next day, before the check had a chance to bounce, she would close the account with the amount of the check still in the account point in cases like these the system would move the money off to suspense account. Idea being, if the money was legit, people could come in and claim their money from their closed account. Problem was, at this point, the fact that it was money still waiting for a check to clear would be lost during the move to the suspense account point, so the next day her friend would go into a different branch and collect the money from her closed account a few days later the check would bounce, but the account was closed, so it got written to a report that no one actually reads. The teller got fired, arrested for fraud, and we changed the system. To prevent stuff like that point we worked closely with the fraud debt and many such interesting occurrences popped up. People learning the bank's systems and figuring out ways to circumvent it so that they can steal money. This girl was so entitled. Her first week she called in sick three days in a row. On probably her third day of work she asked to leave an hour early not because she was sick or had any legitimate reason but because she had nothing to do. I told her a few things she could be doing, and she looked at me, like I told her to eat a bucket of slugs. She became indignant and actually literally stomped her foot saying what's the point, and making a fuss. I sent her back to her seat, and told her to stop making a scene. She spent the last hour texting and complaining to the person next to her who I was happy to overhear, told her to basically grow up. The next day passed uneventfully she even made a sale. The following day she called me with a pretty dramatic story about how sick she was. Later that day she accidentally texted the work group something along the lines of hey girl I'll be there in 5 minutes so excited to see you. Boy did it blow up with the staff, everyone thought it was hilarious. The next day I called her into my office to fire her. She was in utter and complete shock that she was being fired. She had some lame story about being sick but having to pick up her sister at the airport. She told me she was the best employee, how hard she's been working. After being defensive and expressing her disbelief that I wouldn't want her to work anymore she quickly turned nasty. 
She began lashing out at her coworker saying she worked harder than most other people and she began throwing other people under the bus. Telling me who played games on their computer or was using their phone etc. I wasn't having any of that. No one likes a snitch and I felt so relieved to be getting rid of such a toxic person. I told her to stop talking and leave. The look of complete shock on her face was priceless. One of my final moments. Oh story time. So, I personally didn't have to fire this guy, the owner of the restaurant I worked at did, but I was there when it happened point so, the executive chef had a bad drinking problem. A lot is allowed to slide in this industry, and everyone that's been in it long enough has worked a few shifts with a pretty solid buzz going on. As long as you can handle your sheet, nobody says anything, generally. Well, this guy not only couldn't handle when he was drunk, he would get absolutely sheet faced, blackout drunk, and became very aggressive when he did. So one Friday night he's almost through a bottle of Irish whiskey. Needless to say he's not hiding it very well. He's slurring his words, stumbling around, and starting sheet with everyone. Well, the owner gets the phone call to come in, shows up, and fires him on the spot. By this point the chef had thrown up in a garbage can and stolen a beer from a customer and then tried to get our dishwasher, who was just a mountain of a human being, to fight said customer. Dishwasher declined because he's not faking retarded point well, chef doesn't take to being fired too kindly, and decides to cause quite the scene. Starts screaming at the owner in full view of the dining room, and threatens to hit him. He doesn't hit him, which is probably a good thing for all persons involved, especially the chef. Because by now the co-owner, who was effectively a silent partner, but came up there for beers pretty frequently, had shown up. Co-owner was a really nice guy, would buy beers for the kitchen after busy nights, and would always shoot the sheet about college football. This was in a college town. College ball is a way of life here. He just so happened to also be a former Green Beret, and looked the part. So as the now former executive chef is raising hell and threatening the owner, the co-owner grabs him by the arm, gets his hand all the way around the guy's bicep, and simply says two options. Easy way or hard way, he takes the easy way and is escorted out of the restaurant. By now the owner is on the phone with the sheriff's department trying to get a deputy to come over and officially trespass this guy. This is in Florida, and to have a trespass order legally upheld it has to come from an officer. So, deputy shows up, and instead of trespassing the drunken ex-chef, he's stuffing him in the back of his patrol car. Turns out chef had left our restaurant and started terrorizing the places around the neighborhood, walked on several bar tabs, and got into a fight. All in the course of about 30 minutes. Dude was on a roll. He was crying while getting arrested. Apparently this was not his first rodeo, and his wife thought he had been sober for the last six months. I have no idea how he hid that from her, so going to jail for being drunk and disorderly, as well as a litany of other offenses, wasn't really the greatest thing in the world for marital harmony point I felt kinda bad for the guy, but he pulled similar stunts at other places around town after that. He's effectively blacklisted from anywhere in town, which isn't surprising considering the previous story isn't even one of his worst offenses. Anyway, that's why you learn how to handle your buzz at work. Not a manager, but I had a guy that worked below my in a data center. The guy was horrible in about every way. He worked the midnight shift and would always bring in white castle sliders and let them sit in the room all night. He'd take his shoes off and stick the room up. He'd sleep on the job. He'd randomly unplug equipment when in a flying alert came up on the finicky monitoring software we used. This was the early stuff. We were having trouble keeping staff in the late hours. So he got about 13 warnings to shape up and was feeling comfortable in his job security. So after we hired two new employees and trained them on day shift for a week, he got called up to our boss office at the end of his shift. Since I was the most senior member in his department, I got to come up too. The door was closed and the same speech he's been given 13 times starts again about needing to shape up, stop making stupid mistakes, blah blah blah. He's then handed a sheet of paper to sign acknowledging that he agrees and everything was above board. The dummy was smiling as he signed it because he felt into shareable point. As soon as the paper was back in our boss hands, she quickly files the paper that makes eye contact, her smile showing now. 
So anyway team member with this being your 14th official notice, we are going to go ahead and just let you go. He stands up, nodding with the same sheet eating grin he had a minute, before I totally understand. I'll do better next time. He turns for the door my boss and I look at each other in disbelief. She steps around her desk and says no you won't. You were just fired, it finally starts to sink in. He looks at me for confirmation. I'm struggling to keep a straight face and barely manage it while I slowly nod at him. His face drops and I escort him to his locker to collect his belongings. As soon as he was out the door, I went back to my boss office and we laughed our ass off for a few minutes. My own point I was a director of operations for a broadline food service distributor for nearly a decade. At first, I loved my job. My dad was an operations manager when I grew up and I was excited and proud to achieve what he had by the time I was 27. I didn't really know anything about leadership, hours, warehouse equipment, workers comp, having a fleet of vehicles, etc. Point and the first few years were tough. I worked a lot of hours, I made mistakes, I faked up in my treatment of people, but I learned. And, after a few years, I felt like I was doing a pretty good job. I was getting good reviews, raises, bonuses, most of people liked me, or seemed to anyway, haha, ha. along the way, I hired and fired a lot of people. Some were tough. Sometimes I would counsel, and work with people, and give them every opportunity and they failed. Sometimes they were as holes that needed to go, but I still felt bad because they had wives and families. I had to fire a guy who was raising his granddaughter because his daughter was a junkie, but the guy was an asshole to all of his coworkers. After repeated counseling and a write-up, he left a pile of Chinese tequila trash in my office one night. Then there were guys that needed firing, deserved it, and I had no pity. Those were satisfying in their own way. Over my last 4 to 5 years, I had gotten a pretty good team together. I had a solid warehouse manager, good night manager, good transportation manager, and a really awesome safety guy. My boss, the COO, would take my best people for other departments that reported directly to him. Transportation manager went to purchasing. Warehouse manager went to sales. Each time my boss took one of these guys, he would ask me to do the job until the next calendar year when we would budget more money for a kick as replacement. Then it wouldn't happen. I ended up doing my job and two other 45 hours a week jobs. I did other jobs too. I was the produce buyer for 6 months. I was in charge of a 16,000 square feet building expansion. Fortunately, I was good at it, but I couldn't do everything the way I wanted to. There was no long term, just day to day. That isn't leadership point my boss began to harp on me about the fact that we just seemed to blunder forward with little long term planning. I explained what I thought the problems were, and he told that I should have fixed them long ago. That's what leaders do. I was subject to several lectures, and was eventually issued a written warning. This, after 7 years of stellar reviews and raises. So I started the search for good managers. It took a year, but just in time for my wedding, I had an awesome night manager, an awesome transportation guy, and an awesome warehouse manager, all in place. It freed me up for planning, and we started tackling projects that I had wanted to for years. Things like 5S processes. I made teams and let the guys in the warehouse run their own areas. They took ownership of it, and it was awesome. Very proud moment for me point I went to Vegas with my fiance, got married, spent a week there, and then came home to be fired within 10 minutes of returning to work. Lack of vision. Bam. Just like that, I lost a decent paying job in an area where it's tough to make more than dollar sign 40k slash year, and I had been married for a week point so why was I happy? Because I was faking miserable at that place. Getting ragged on daily by my boss. Working miles off 6 days a week. Getting phone calls at 10pm and 3am and everything in between. Answering emails at all hours on all days. At first, I was terrified. But I found a new job in 4 days. It doesn't pay as well, but I work 40 hours a week. My boss is the coolest guy around and treats us like gold. And I have my happiness back point of all the firings I participated in. My own ended up being the best. This is a long story, strap yourselves in.
I used to be a supervisor of a late night bar, not the owner, nor the general manager, that had a strict policy on staff not drinking whilst on shift simply due to the nature of the job, the place had a lot of issues with customers assaulting members of staff, and it would not reflect well if the staff were intoxicated. There was also a policy on not having relations with customers. One young man that worked with us, for the sake of this story I will call James. Now James joined the team due to the fact that he was in a relationship with a girl who also worked for us, for whilst he remained employed by us, he was a fantastic and outstanding worker, would never show up late, would always find something to do such as cleaning without being told, when things got quiet etc or so we thought. However, when his relationship ended with said girl, and she left the company, things got, how shall I put this, interesting. We discovered exactly why his girlfriend had broke up with him and left. It was because he had been caught sleeping with customers whilst on shift. This was reason enough for him to be fired by itself. However he was let off with a warning and continued to work for approximately two more weeks. On the day of said firing, he came into work drunk and began pulling off spirits from the back of the bar and taking them to the cellar with him to drink. He was not alone point my at the time girlfriend was out that night and was particularly good friends with James. They seemed to get along really well in the past, but for me to not realize, too well point a colleague went to question why he had taken spirits from behind the bar in the middle of a shift as we were incredibly busy. This colleague then caught James with my at the time girlfriend in the cellar. I was completely unaware of this until the manager had been notified and called me into the office the next day to tell me what had happened. He had CCTV footage of said thing happening, which he didn't show me he just mentioned it, thank god, and explicit me gave me permission to personally go and fire James myself. I didn't hesitate. Definitely the most satisfying moment I had in the two years I had been working there. The boss had to go completely against policy to allow me to do that and could have got into serious trouble from the owners, so the boss deserves a huge thumbs up for being a good guy, don't get many of them these days so yeah, fact James. Obligatory not a firing manager, but I worked in retail once, got moved to another office as a regular consultant slash cashier which had manager position vacant. There was a guy named Jim who was on trial to become, said manager he was strict and demanding, but others didn't mind much, I had a few fights with him, but it was okay, a few days later he told me about his scheme to make money, Jim had to pay his credit each month for his new apartment, so he wanted all the money he could get, so, first of all, Jim wanted us to buy sim cards, with our own money, and use them for a few days, and then get rid of them, Obviously, he told us to use clients information in related paperwork to avoid fraud fines. I said no, while two of my other colleagues participated in that. They've been working there for a few months under Jim's rule, and they gladly took that risk, knowing that it will increase their paycheck and net some profit point next thing was price tags. Jim simply removed them from accessories, we were selling smartphones, and told clients prices higher than those he saw on computer screen. Clients couldn't see that, since clients display was broken, not sure if it was Jim's work or he simply didn't bother with fixing it. He and his crew, excluding me, refused to take credit backslash debit cards, to prevent showing the real price in receipt backslash bills, and told everyone, that machine doesn't work. Same goes for a seat machine. So, client goes in, sees something s slash he likes, Jim scans it, tell the wrong price, receives the money in cash. Says goodbye to client, finish the selling operation on his PC, throws out the receipt, and puts real price in safe and extra in his pocket. Clean job. My last straw was when I failed a secret customer checklist for saying, have a nice day, instead of come back soon, or some other bullshit. Jim gave me hell, since whole team lost some money from that. I took my coat and told him to go fuck himself. Point went straight two hours, ratted him out. Took a visit to security as well, and never looked back. Two months later got a text from one of my ex-colleague that Jim was fired and punished. Never heard a word from them again point TLDR. Minimum wage retail sucks. <laughs> Obligatory, not me, but I was in the office next door to the firing point so we were a small startup company, four employees total, including the president. 
we wrote a warehouse management software using RPG Forth, an ancient, but stable as hell language, trying to take advantage of the IBM 400 rupee systems that people loved, because the S400 never dies, but IBM was trying to push people into less reliable new systems because profit. The company was the president slash salesman, me, the GUI developer, marketing guy, and bug tester, lead programmer, I'll call him Forrest. He is a very nice man who was very country, and finally the assistant programmer, I'll call her cunt face. She is a bipolar woman who would work twice as fast as Forrest, but have 10x is the amount of bugs in her code, it was just the please. Forrest and me for the first year, as we banged out how we wanted the software to look and function. Then we brought in Cuntface. In the beginning, she seemed alright. But at social gatherings, the financier threw a lot, she regularly got sheet-faced, and proceeded to tell us all how her family life was in the crapper. Then her work turned super sheety. Like she just didn't care anymore. Like, I'd find a big list of bugs in her stuff, document them, return the list to her, and within 30 minutes she'd say they were all taken care of. Some were, some weren't, and then there were now an additional 5 bugs to be found. That sort of thing point anyway, we got our first client in a small college town about 5 hours away. We began spending Monday through Thursday on site, working with their developers and warehouse people, doing our best to give them what they wanted, which was another two modules that we previously hadn't discussed, and a ton more work for everybody involved. About five months into this on-site construction, cunt face is getting worse and worse. She's in the middle of a divorce, her daughter is living with her, but she's a retarded human leech, and cunt face is starting to get wasted on wine every night. Point one week, the president is not with us on site, since his son is in the hospital in our town. Forrest is in charge, but he's too easygoing. Well, cunt face is in rare form that week. She's visibly grumpy, snapping at everything, showing even less respect for Forrest than before, which was never that much lately, and all around an even more unpleasant person than usual. The last morning we're there, she delays us leaving the house we are staying in by about 30 minutes, screaming on the phone to somebody, and throwing her bed sheets and towels around, and then bangs her suitcase into Forrest's car as she's trying to throw it into the trunk. Forrest gets mad. I've never seen him mad before. He gets out of the car that he and I have been very patiently waiting in and starts loudly asking her what her issue is and why she's disrespecting his property. She starts to cry and apologizes, but she's still pissed and now so is Forrest. I'm just trying to stay out of it point the day at the warehouse go sheetily. Everyone is pissed and nothing is getting done. In fact, more work is being created because everyone is just not into it. We drive the 5 hours home in silence. The next day, Friday, the prees is still at the hospital. Forrest calls cunt face into his office. I'm actually in an open office area just outside his actual office, but he's got a big window on the wall between us, and I can hear every whisper in there. He asks her to please sit, but she refuses. He calmly asks her if she's having any trouble at home that is causing her errors in judgment both in her coding and her actions. She is visibly fuming. Her hands are starting to tremble, her face is turning red. She is pissed. She still just stands there silently though, staring him down. To his credit, Forrest doesn't buckle. He's had enough of her sheet point finally he says, are you looking to get fired? Because your productivity is down to nil, and your attitude is pure crap. You know you've already been written up five times, and yet you refuse to improve at all. What is it you want? She then explodes. How dare you talk to me that way? Do you know what my home life is like? My husband's a lazy good for nothing. My kids are doing blah 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 blah. She goes on for about 5 full minutes. Forrest just stares at her she finally stops to breathe. Forrest asks, are you done? She then goes off again, on him and the president. How they're doing nothing but causing her to work, work, work. How it's all their fault that her life is awful. How they're the worst bosses around, and they don't know what they're doing, and this company is sheet. This time it's a 10 minute rant point, when she finally stops this time, Forrest is red faced with rage himself. He gets up, leaning on his desk, and asks her quietly, but still loud enough for me to make it out as I pretended to work, if that's how you feel, what are you still doing here? 
She looks like she's about to cry again, but then she gathers herself and finally blurts out, fine, I quit. She then opens the office door and then slams it behind her. I was surprised the glass in the door didn't shatter Forrest follows her out, makes sure that she doesn't take anything that isn't hers, and then walks her down to her car. Then he races upstairs and jumps on his computer and blocks her out of everything. It was such a relief to get rid of her. We miraculously found another RPG 4th programmer within a week, and it was business as usual for a while, except when she tried to file for unemployment. We all had written accounts of her actually quitting on us though, and as far as I know nothing ever came of it. It is amazing how one toxic person can just destroy an office environment though. What was more amazing was Forrest sticking up for himself and the company like he did. I thought he would buckle and just let this sheet continue for god knows how long. I'm not a firing manager or of any authority, but I enjoy this story point we had a horrible worker who would do next to nothing on her shifts. One day she had asked me for coverage on a day I had asked off for a family party. I wasn't thrilled about having to go in, but I told her I'd be able to cover her as her grandmother had been in the hospital. She thanked me and had said she would make it up to me. Before I go in to pick up my paycheck before my shift, I notice on social media her visiting her grandmother, but only an hour later having left the hospital and practically eager to be hanging out with her mom. I never brought this up to my boss, only a few coworkers. My boss later hears that I'm covering for her and she stands up for me in saying that I had that day off intentionally and says that she would cover for me. I later receive a text from the girl saying that I should be more than happy to cover for her and that she never is able to get coverage for when she needs it. I guess my boss had been quite angry about the situation and had given her a talk about the situation. I get a phone call from one of my co-workers who asks if I called her out on the social media postings, which I didn't, and she tells me she had quit. But instead of allowing her to put in her two weeks, my boss fires her and calls me asking if my friend was still available to work, who she had interviewed two months back. The reason this is my favorite story is because of what happens the next day. One of my co-workers has a nickname very close to the name of the girl fired, and her nickname is put as a contact in my boss's phone point she accidentally texts the girl who's fired that they will be training my friend for a few weeks. Excuse my language, but that was everything the cunt had deserved. I'm a recruiter, and when I get somebody hired they got to work for our client, and then ideally I don't hear from them until they quit point then there was Brenda. Brenda is a 50 to 60 something blue collar Irish woman. We are a tech staffing firm primarily, but we got an order for someone who was familiar with union payroll, and I thought I can find someone who does this and make a quick buck. Well, I found Brenda, called her and discussed the position at a small union shop, and we eventually get her an interview. Brenda calls me 5 minutes from the interview and says she is lost. I ask if she has a smartphone, she says yes, so I advise her to use Google Maps. She has no idea how, so I have to personally direct her with Google Maps on my computer. The whole time she is screaming that the Indian man at Dunkin Donuts was no help with directions. At this point I'm thinking she is clueless and partly racist and has no shot. Well, she gets the job and I was shocked point fast forward to the end of her first week. She has been demoted because she can't type fast or well enough. This position was mainly just typing, so not being able to type was very detrimental, but I think they feel bad for her, so they don't fire her. Then she reams out her coworkers and managers and tells them that none of their policies are any good things like that. I wasn't there, but my account manager called me and said that I have to call Brenda and fire her. So I was really looking forward to firing this woman who had been a pain in my eyes for about 3 weeks and made us look stupid to our client, but when I actually did I felt awful. I need this job, half underscore pastor underscore. Yeah well, you should have either 1 figured out how to type, or 2 be nicer to your coworkers or 3. Wait until after your first week. To really lay into them. Still felt bad until she called me a week later and told me to go f myself that temp agencies are a scam, how the company refused to utilize her talents. I'm a technical recruiter I don't work for a temp agency f you right back Brenda. 
In the 90s I worked for a big bank as a network slash systems architect for a high profit line of business within the bank. Our organization was rolling out 19 inch monitors for all users, and because of the cost of the units our management decided that the 700 or so monitors for Dallas be stored on our floor and distributed slash installed by our engineering group point in less than a week they realized this was a poor use of their money and our time, and I was tasked with bringing in some temps to get the work done. I went through one of our approved temp agencies and brought in two guys who were experienced techs, but certainly not network engineers by any stretch. Explained the work to them, they seemed happy to have the opportunity to work in a nice air-conditioned office tower during the summer with no big deadlines. Got them started, they worked through the first day, no issues. Sometime during the second day these two guys decided to outsource their work to several homeless bums. They go find some, buy the matching polo shirts, and put them to work. Shortly thereafter our help desk, which was located in another state, starts getting complaints about service techs who smelled bad, and who were acting inappropriately. Help desk contacts me, I go investigate, figure out what's going on. The bums had already broken a few monitors, set up an area, to sleep in a storeroom and at least one was high as a kite. Total cluster fact. I had to get building security to throw them out, the police ended up being called, it was a mess I find the two temps downstairs at the bar in one of the building's restaurants, drinking margaritas, having chips and quizo, and generally having a great time whilst congratulating one another on being paid to do nothing point firing them on the spot in public, getting them fired from the temp agency, and blackballing them from ever being employed by the bank was easily my favorite firing experience. Not someone I had to fire, but I watched them get fired point jumped on a throw away for this. I work at a retail store for a pretty well known company. I was up front by the registers talking to one of my coworkers, and I watched somebody from our customer service desk being walked out the store point. When I say walked out the store, I mean clear across our registers and past customer service desk towards the exit of the store. And I may have neglected to mention that she had on a pair of handcuffs and was being escorted by two very nice gentlemen from our local police department point I found out that she was helping people ring up gift cards at our customer service desk but she would give the customer back a blank gift card and keep the active one for herself. If I remember the arrest report correctly, it was enough to where it was considered felony theft in our state, but it was less than $2,500. For the record, in my state some counties have public arrest records that you can search for done by the local sheriff's department, as if that's not enough, someone who also worked at the customer service desk and doubled as a cashier, about 6 months later, also got escorted out of the store by two very nice gentlemen from our local police department. Point why, the exact same reason as the first girl, but with not as much money involved point did I mention that the second girl was working at the store the same time the first girl got walked out? I run a small doctor's office. My wife was then the office manager and we had a girl running the front desk. Part of her responsibility was to send claims out to the insurance companies and statements to patients. Late in November we noticed that collections was down. My wife did some investigating and found that front desk girl hadn't been sending out the daily claims. We were going to be closed part of the first week of December as I was going to a conference for continuing education and we gave front desk girl an ultimatum of using the time to get the work done. When we got back we found she had not done anything point. So I told her and the part time girl that they had to get the bills out within their next week or they would be let go. On Friday front desk girl asks for Tuesday off as it was the only day her boyfriend would be in town to take her Christmas shopping. I told her under no circumstance would I let her have Tuesday off as she had not sent out the claims yet and that she needed to work Tuesday point mid morning Tuesday part time girl tells me front desk girl had left saying she had to take her daughter to the hospital. I knew the grandfather kept the daughter while front desk girl was working so I called the dad's number. The little girl answered the phone. I got the dad on the phone and told him front desk girl had said she was taking the little girl to the hospital. He said no, the girl was right here eating a sandwich. Then he said doc, I'm very sorry, so. I called front desk girl's house and she answered the phone. 
I said I was very worried about the little girl. She said the girl was in IQ with a terrible urinary tract infection. I said, no, I just talked to her and your dad. She is fine. You are fired. She burst into tears and said she would come to work and get the claims out and get caught up. I said no, you are fired. Next. Morning she tries to kick the door down before I get there. When I arrive she comes in and says she will get the claims out. I said if you do not leave I will call the law you are fired. My wife walks in and front desk girl tells her we can't fire her because I have been sexually harassing her and trying to get her in bed. My wife says you're not his type. I aided in the firing of this guy once. We work in an industry that's kind of a small world, and he was my manager back in the day. When he was my boss, he would change schedules on us last second, and I'm talking one hour notice. It would be my day off, and he would tell me I needed to come in right away. I was at lunch with my parents and he didn't give a sheet. I went to work, and he said OSRY we don't need you anymore. We had it out, and I told him, you better let me work, because I just left lunch with my family on my day off, to get ready for work point that's, just to give you an idea, he was an unbelievable lazy piece of sheet point he eventually got fired from there, then became a GM at some other place, and I heard similar stories from other people, that he's a lazy ass, and lost his job there too. Cut to a few years later, we happen to be working at the same place again, except he's in another department. One day, he didn't do his job, and it screwed over a bunch of clients, overcharging them, the books were wrong, he basically faked up the entire thing, and pissed off everyone in the process he got on speakerphone with me, my cow walker, and his director in the room he had the nerve, to tell all of us, that we don't know what we are doing, that we don't understand his job. Dude, we work together, he went on and on about how he doesn't have time for this or that. He told his own boss, as well my cow walker and me, that we were all just a bunch of incompetent paper pushers who don't understand what he does, because we just sit around on our phones. He had no problem saying this to his own director all three of us wrote an email to ours about the incident, basically a professional version of these other ways in such such and such pissed us off yesterday, while keeping it about work of course. Fired the next day, loved it point according to his LinkedIn he transferred to a job in Key West. Oh he sure told us. Live in the good life, working near Duval Street point only to transfer back a few months later, to another location nearby, where he hadn't been fired from yet, since he's been blacklisted everywhere else in town at this point. Every single location in South Florida, that has ever worked with this guy, hates his mother faking guts.